All right, working on a little scooter here, a little dirt bike ain't here. He's uh, helped me pretty much with all the welding and designing and stuff, so I can, uh, I'll show you guys what we have planned here. All right, we got the back wheel on, and uh, the sprocket's on the right-hand side, and it sort of has a coaster brake, or a coaster, you know, and I kind of like that, you know, so when, you, when you're not under power, you know, you could actually coast this thing. And on this side, it has a brake. And this is the engine I decided to go with. It's a, it's a 5S. It's the one we use on, on almost everything. And uh, we'll make a kickstart for it. But the, the shaft on these is on the left-hand side. So what I would have to do is probably make a jack shaft so I could center the engine. You know, pretty much on this plate. I'm going to put another... Uh, uh, piece of metal coming up here and have the plate up here. We're going to mount the engine up here. So to make it centered, if if we didn't put a jack shaft, we could probably lock this wheel up and spin it around, put it upside down and have the, the chain on that side. But then that would mean that engine would have to be hanging off the side here for the shaft to line up. So I think the jack shaft is the way to go. Matter of fact, uh, let me uh, let me throw you guys on a tripod, and uh, we'll give you an idea how things line up here. All right. Yeah, if we locked that wheel up and flipped it over, right where this black thing is is where the sprocket would be. And for this engine, like I said, the engine's gonna be up top here. But just for to line it up, I'll show you. That engine would have to be way over here, hanging off the side, for that clutch to line up with the sprocket. So, by putting it in the middle, right about like that. See, I'm using this engine because it has a gas tank incorporated and stuff like that, and it makes things easier. So, by putting this up top, like this, now you're not going to see anything. Okay. Alright, imagine that up top there. Then we could uh, come down to a jack shaft, and this. Is going to take a probably a 40 chain because that's what the sprockets are a 35 or a 40 and that'll go to a jack shift and we'll put another sprocket on this side and use a 25 chain because that's what this is you know i have uh, i have faith in a 25 chain it you know it's, it's not going to be under that much pressure to stretch and stuff i mean we're not going to we're not going to be racing this thing so that's the plan all right now uh, let me move this engine over here and i'll tell you a little bit about that that's a funny little story all right, yeah, I just picked this engine up over the weekend uh, at a show up in Cool Springs. There, it's a five S, and it's a steel head, iron head, and most of the, most of the five S's we get got the aluminum heads on them. So uh, the guy wanted ten bucks for this, and I said I'll, I'll give you five bucks for it. I said I don't even see five dollars worth of parts. I you know, I told I says the the shrouds all cut in the side here. Somebody cut the shroud on both sides. Got a big dent. I told I says the carburetor's no good, it's missing parts. Spark plug's no good. You know, I just went around the whole thing and told him, I says, even the oil fill, the oil fill's broken. I said, plus, plus it's frozen solid here. You know, it looked like it have been sitting in mud or something. I said, even the gas cap, the gas cap even got a big dent in it. I says, the gas tank's no good. So, uh, I told him, I says, I don't, I don't even see five hours worth of parts here. I said, I said, you should give me five dollars and I'll take it. And then he said, no, he goes, uh, give me five dollars and get the hell out of here. So it was, it was all light, you know, we were, we were all having a good time. But anyway, we, we paid five dollars for this, uh, but it has some issues and we don't even know why it's stuck. You know, it's probably, from the looks of it, it looks like this top half might have been sitting in mud. But the funny thing is, you know, you look at the gas tank and the outside has rust on it and looks bad. But you open it up and... And it's beautiful. Look at look at the center there. That's actually. Let me get that out of there. It's it's just uh, rust. But the the gas tank. We got a shiny. Uh, we got shiny there. It is the galvanized and everything. So the inside of this tank is is actually actually perfect. It does have a layer a coat of mud on the bottom, but other than that, I mean, it's perfect. So if anything, we got a we got a good gas tank out of it. But anyway, I was looking at the side. Me and Mike were both looking at it, and we're trying to figure out what's going on here. Because uh, this cup is different. Most of the time, the, 
cup is held on with a nut and this one has two screws holding it on and something back here and, and we didn't know what that was we can see where the, the screen was between it and like I said I think it's, this was a 19 1951 no this is 1952 October 52 this was according to the, the serial number and uh, I don't think they had recoils back then. You know, some 5S's came with recoils, but not, not till a later date. And I even told Mike, I said, why would that be a recoil with a cup on there for the, with, a, with a string? It don't make sense. So if anybody knows what this is back here, let us know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart and uh, see what it needs. It may be a scrap engine, it may be garbage, but uh, if we can get it going and working, this is the one that's going to go on at... Uh, that scooter. Let me get, let me get another engine and show you what's supposed to be on the side there. All right, here's another 5S I had here. This one here's a, a 1951. Look how the sticker is, right? That's the original sticker, original housing and everything, and uh, got crooked the sticker is. You know they weren't they weren't concerned about beauty back then. Just uh, paint it, throw a sticker on it, and get rid of it. But anyway, this is what we're used to. This is the only thing I've ever come across is, you know, they have a, a reverse thread big nut on there. And the recoil, we're not the, it's not even a recoil, it's just a rope start, it's a cup start. And then they have the, the screen, which is actually tack welded onto the middle of the, the cup here. And that's not, that's not what's going on here. Like I said, I've never seen this set up here. So maybe some of you guys, you experts can tell me when they uh, first came out, when Briggs first started with a recoil, like I say, I can't imagine it being a recoil. I, I, I don't know how that would work or what the purpose is. So, so maybe some of you guys that are familiar with these, Boo Boo or Zippo, uh, let me know. Let me know what the deal is, and let me know. Let me know when they first came out with that. It's interesting. It's, and, you know, it also has a it's about a quarter inch lip here, and this one here is just barely, you know, just barely a, an indent. So I don't know. Maybe there was something that went on there. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. If somebody knows, uh, let me know. But what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to take off what I can, carburetor, and like I say, this thing's frozen solid. So I'll uh, I'll see if I can get the head off and then juice up the plug, get that out, take the bottom off, and uh, take whatever I can off, and see what the problem is, and then uh, we'll try to make this a functional engine. I do have a, a, a 5S out in the shed that's a recoil, and I don't know what year that is, so. You know, something like this I'll use for this this uh, scooter, but I wouldn't use this on one of our creations or something, you know. I'd, I'd wind up using an engine that was already in great shape, so. All right, let me, uh, I'll throw you up on a tripod, and let's, I'll start taking this apart and see what's going on here. Yeah, I guess first thing to do is uh, take off the stuff that looks easy. Just take the gas tank and, uh, oh wow, the camera it's loosened right up. I guess we'll take the gas tank off, get that out of the way. I'll give us we can be able to soak that carburetor. We'll probably be able to get the carburetor working. Huh. Looks like a lot of rust. Oh. Hold on, I'll get back with you. Alright, sorry about that. That was another TV producer who wanted to give me a, a TV show. I ain't got time for that. I got YouTube to take care of. I got to take care of you guys. Now let's take this off, see what's under here. So far, I haven't come across anything too tight. Look at that. If I wanted to save that gasket, it would have ripped in half. But. Let's look in here. Hmm. Huh. Wow, that's strange. Somebody. Somebody put this in. Whoop. Don't go away. Somebody put this in. And had this on top. And that's supposed to be on top of this thing. This is what. Uh, this is your breather.
That's supposed to be sandwiched together like that. Oh well. Somebody, uh, didn't know what they're doing, had their hands in this. No wonder they threw it in the lake. Alright, that looks, that looks a little rusty. Now, there's probably no oil in this. So, just to make it lighter, I think maybe I'll take the bottom off. Alright, I'll turn you guys off for now. Alright, before I turn this off, we got the 7 16th wrench here. Let's take the housing off. Everything's well rusted, but the, the nuts going into the, the engine don't seem a bit too bad. Yet, I mean the head, the head bolts look pretty bad. Matter of fact, from looks of the spark plug, it was probably sitting in more than that one. All right. Eh. Well, that's all your rust on your magnet. At least the magnet's good. Okay. That ain't turning. All right. Actually, the shroud ain't in bad shape. It's solid. Really solid. You know? I might even consider fixing that dent because it has this high lip on here for some reason and keeping it just for posterity. Fix that dent and uh, clean it up. Okay. Let's take this off. So even though they're rusty, you know, the outside's rusty and everything. Look how clean that is. Where it goes into the engine. Hmm. Oh. Road King forgot these older ones have four. Four screws holding them in. My bad. You think I don't know that, right? I knew that. I just forgot. I'm old. I'm allowed to forget. There we go. It's because I just got done working on uh, newer crap. It fooled me. All right. This this has a wire here that that connects it to the points. So I'm not gonna be able to get that off till I take the till I get that off. So I'm also just put a couple of bolts in there to hold it in place. All right. My bad. All right. I thought those two screws in there are going to be a, a headache. I thought I was going to have to drill them out, but uh, I sprayed them with some aerocroil, let it soak for about five minutes, and then I uh, I heated it up with some uh, map gas. And I, uh, I took a screwdriver, put it on there, and uh, whoops, sorry, I hit my head on you. Sorry about that. And then, uh, you know, I, I just put the screw right in this slot there and got a big screwdriver and sure enough they come right out I'd grab that, I picked that up now but that's probably hot as hell hot as heck so I don't want to keep hitting you guys See that bell loosen up. Oh, there you go. Look at that. I don't know if that's hot or not. Yeah, it's a little warm. It's a little warm yet. All right, let me take that off. All right, I took the bell off, the rope star, and here's the screen we were talking about earlier. And from the looks of this, it does. It looks like it's an early. There's no ball bearings in here. So somebody must have just been using this as a nut. They didn't have a nut. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, that uh, this is an early recoil. Now right, let me clean it up and see if I can get that off. That's, that's going to be tough. Even with my tool, I might have to juice that up. All right, I cleaned this one side up here, and I sprayed it with some Aerocroil, and that's kind of stuff that'll uh, 
that'll sink in there because that's a coarse thread. And uh, while that's soaking in there, I figure I, I take the head off. So I got where you guys at? There you go. How's that? I, I was able to get them out. They were pretty tough. I had to get them off with a breaker, a little baby breaker bar, and a uh, hammer. But uh, they came loose. And here's the last one. I didn't take the last one out yet. Me, we're all going to look at this together. Wow. Oh, man. This was the toughest one. Oh. All the rest of them came out pretty easy. Okay. All right, I'm going to lube that one up and... Uh, Ease that one out, and then we'll still. I'll come back to you, and we'll take the top off. All right, I squared it down and loosened it up a little. Didn't take it off yet, though. Oh, that's much better. Much better. Okay, here it comes. All right, let's look at it together. Oh, oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, the head's not bad, but. Uh, Golly gee whiz. Let me take it off of there and uh, we'll look in there. Alright, well, that explains why it's seized. Looks like it has quite a bit of rust in there, but I think that rust made it came from the head. Remember, that was an iron head. I think. Well, I'll have to get a better look at that, but. Uh, here we go. You never know. You never know what they look like once you once you hit them with a home. So don't give up hope. Don't give up hope yet. All right. You see now I can I can blow that out and and soak it along with the valves. But uh, meanwhile I'll try and take that side uh, this, this off here. I'll see if my tool will work on it. All right. Interesting. Yeah. You never know what you're gonna run into with these things. All right. Let's continue on. All right, pay attention here. We're going to learn something. Yeah, Road King just learned something. Uh, on these older motors, they always have a reverse thread. All, all the ones I've ever dealt with had the reverse thread. And uh, our, little, our little tool fit on here. And what I did is, I tried tightening it, which would be the reverse thread, which would take it off. And, uh, you know, it was moving, you know? And then it was moving, but it wasn't moving that good. So then I said, well, let me try the other way. And sure enough, it's got a normal thread. No reverse thread. So the thread is good on there. I can get that off. But uh, I've never seen that. I've never seen one this old with standard thread on there, which is good. Because uh, if I make a kickstart, then I, I can use a, a modern. If it's the same thread, it might not be. We'll see. Yeah, if that's, uh, if that's the same thread as the modern ones, I could use that and make a kick, kick start out of it with that clutch. I'm going to go get one and see if it'll fit. Yeah, looks like they're going to be the same thread, which is good for me if I want to work, if I want to go that route. I can't fit this on here right now because there's rust on the shaft here. The shaft is actually keeping it. It's going on here, but uh, you got to clean the shaft up first. Okay. All right, things are looking good. All right, actually doesn't look uh, very rusty down here at all. So uh, let's see if we can pop this off. So I can grab this where I can put some. There we go. I think I got it. Yeah, I got it. Huh? Where's the key? Let me wipe this off here. Sometimes they have the year. This one. This one says K. Sometimes they have the year in one of these circles, but I don't see it. If I see it, I'll get back with you. Take that off. Let me get some screwdrivers. I think I said screwdriver. What I actually need is a spin tight. That's right, spin tight. Google it. Hmm. 
No one's bad in there at all. Okay, now as you recall, I couldn't take this off before because there was a wire. down here and connects right here. Alright, now we're going to do a screwdriver. That's right. Get the capacitor out there. And this wire here. That wire here is connected to this, so I'm going to get rid of this. I got chewing gum here or something that keeps it in place. I don't think it's sit. Let me dig that chewing gum out, we'll pull that out of the way. Alright, I dug all the chewing gum out of here. Now this should, uh, this should come right out. There you go. Oh. What the hell's holding it now? There we go. Alright, that ain't gonna come out. That ain't gonna come out that way, so. This here, this isn't soldered on, this is just twisted on. Take that out. There you go. Alright, let me look it over and uh, see what else we got. Let me check see how much time we got, too. Alright, I scraped all that stuff out of there, and believe it or not, that cylinder walls actually look pretty good. I don't know what it looks like where it is around the, the piston and stuff. We were going to have to knock that out, but uh, I didn't oil I didn't uh, put any coil or anything yet, and uh, even the valves, I was looking at them and thinking, geez, it's going to be a pain in the ass, but. Uh, I put my uh, screwdriver down here and look at that, is that wacky or what? Both of them. That one sticks, that sticks a little bit. But uh, no problem, this one here goes up and down. So uh, I, I think this might be alright once we get it apart. So uh, you never know, you never know by looking at something. Alright, I think uh, I, I didn't check the time, but uh, you probably got your money's worth. But uh, I got the head sitting over here I'm gonna carry you I'm gonna keep you on a tripod and carry you over here and uh, let me see if I can do this there you go I got the spark plug all juiced up and I'm gonna let that sit there overnight so uh, we'll see what happens I'm gonna fill this I'm gonna fill this here everything I'm gonna juice that all up with coil and then we'll come back and uh, we'll take all that dead oil part all right all right, enough of this. All right, hold on, hold on, before you go. Remember I told you sometimes you just find the the date on these uh, flywheels, right? We said this was made in October 52. I'll focus in there. It looks like a 52 right there. you think a company this big would have been able to afford a 2 instead of putting a, a backwards, upside down 5. But anyway, I don't know if this will help. Here's your uh, 52, 1952. All right. Enough of this.